Dear distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, greetings from Beijing. I'm Guan Xiaolan from Sing Care International. It is a great honor to chair this session on 2023 WAL Forum. This session, our focus will be on the topic of data management and application in academic libraries. We are delighted to have seven distinguished guests joining us today from Beijing Normal University Library, Chongqing University Library, Normal, uh, National Technical University of Athens, Guangxi University Library, Oriental Institute of the Czech Academy of Sciences, Iranian Research Institute for Information Sciences and Technology, and CNKI. Their insightful presentations are expected to provide us with valuable per uh, perspectives. Now, I would like to introduce our first speaker, Ms. Wang Chung. Ms. Wang is a director of Beijing Univers uh, Normal University Library and holds the position of a professor in the information management department. With her expertise, she also assumes key roles such as executive director of the Library Society of China and the deputy director of the Beijing Committee for Academic Libraries. Today, she will enlighten us with her insightful speech titled with Data Empowerment Practices in Developing and Utilizing Research Data in Institutional Repository. Let's warmly, warmly welcome her. Distinguished colleagues, good afternoon. It is an honor to be part of the 2023 WAL Forum. Take this opportunity, I'd like to share with you some of the achievements of uh, Beijing Normal University. How do we dig deep into our study results, improve our decision-making and academic influence of our university? My title is Data Empowerment Practices in Developing and Utilizing Research Data. I will cover the following five parts. First is the status quo. In 2001, Open Society Research Institute holds a conference in Budapest in which they propose this concept of open access. So this uh, academic database is a new economic uh, academic exchange and research sharing model based on such concept. It is a database for academic literature to collect, store, and share the public information, and they play a very important role of the storage, management, and sharing of the digital assets of organizations. Our library started to build such a IR in 2013, we have the following consideration. First, to have a system openness. With this construction, we can integrate with multi existing platforms to fully utilize this data. Second, is diversity of content. We have uh, papers from journals, conference, the academic degrees, as well as scientific studies. This will further enrich our digital asset. Third is the ease of ease. This platform will be a window to showcase our scientific study results. And also it can be shared by our internal and external users. With uh, good management, we can have better analysis, evaluation, and use of this academic result. Next is the long-term preservation. With building of this IR, we will be able to store the academic asset and we will be able to store it in the long term. Based on the current consideration, the Beijing Normal University Library co developed this platform with the CNKI and officially launched in April 2021. And you can see we have basically met our desired need by collecting long-term store and showcase the academic asset of our scholars. And we have uh, summarized them upon our platform for archiving, management, publishing, access, art, search, and use. And this empowered also our library to conduct data service and have in-depth links with our own data. Up to now, we have collected 
more than 380,000 pieces of data, altogether 17 categories from 1950, and there are also more than 7,000 projects, a homepage of uh, 73 schools and departments, and we also have a homepage for more than 3,300 faculties. The data comes from CNKI, Scopus, EI, and other commercial available data. The patent ownership is very clear. This also integrated very scientific studies of our scholars, as well as dissertations of doctors and master stories, as well as a special digital data based on our collection. Also, we have the self-stored manner for the scholars, so this can be supplementary to our own database. Currently, for these reservoirs, we have a weekly update of the Chinese data and a monthly update of the data of foreign languages. And you can see we have the achievement based on the school's scientific project, statistics, dissertations, and publications. And you can actually search for the details. Second part is the main function of our platform. One of it is a homepage of various uh, departments, as well as a visualized display of the results. So they include a brief introduction of our department, as well as some uh, figures, including side data and the age figure, G figure, and also the statistics. There are various resources, including the number of publications, number of citations, open source distribution, category distribution, etc. There's visualized display based on their submissions. There's also cloud diagram and also distribution of scholars and the shares. Also, as you can see on the left hand side, we have a separate menu to show the academic result and study result. This include different subjects, see different categories, as well as revenue based on this particular result. So this page shows the revenue. You can see the numbers of a publication on the core journals and other important academic sources, as well as the distribution of uh, this result, including it was published on which journals and what was the number of publication, what fund supported the scientific study, and also with the keywords, you can also search for the academic achievement. For example, this one is from the Environment School, and you can use the keyword of surface water and you can see a detail of that. And the second is a visualized display of a scholar, as well as a homepage for the scholar. There are personal information, the titles, and also e-name cards, etc. You can actually click on the name of the scholar and serve to his or her bios, and some of the academic achievements. For example, a scholar relation scram, and also you can scan the QR code to know the research data, statistics, including the subject, publications, journals, and also the foundation supporting this particular scholar. On the other hand, there's also a visualization of the scholar's homepage, show the analysis. You can see the journey of the studies upon every year, how many papers published with whatever keywords, the number of citations, it was collected in which database, and the distribution also the distribution of journals, various papers, you know, the newspapers, conferences and patents. 
And the another thing is on the left hand side, there is a sub menu to see the accomplishment, the student dissertation under this particular professor, the project this uh, professor is involved. There are various categories subject, found, source, year of publish, and also the language. On the right hand side, there is a place you can search whether it's the primary author, the communication author, whether this is a, a achievement of our own organization or not. The third is multi-dimensional statistics and the display in a visualized manner. You can see this is distribution of various uh, subjects and also the basic information, for example, gender, age, and the source of the funding, the trend, as well as domestic and international cooperation situation, and also ranking. And there is a list of the schools, universities, of the ESI index, and also our own organizations, ESI, the various discipline analysis. And also here in our university, we have 37 core publications from our university. There is also a display of that. And this is uh, the more than 7,000 project, as well as the dissertations. So altogether, there are more than 100,000 dissertations. And uh, another thing is the practice of uh, using this uh, database. There are four applications. First is to empower librarians and support our first class disciplines building. And you can see which is going to support our discipline construction using this uh, academic research to have a paranomic analysis report. Based on this requirement, we can have a multidimensional influence analysis for both this education, psychology, and others. And actually, in 2017, we just have analysis results of our major of uh, environment, and our school of environment is listed at the top 0.1% in the ranking. And also, based on our requirement, based on the outsources, with on these uh, different dimensions, for example, the citations, publications, funding, cooperation, to make analysis of our achievement in the past 10 years. There is a report of the international paper publication, and we have uh, another 60 similar reports in recent years. Also, we guide various schools and departments to self use the academic reservoirs to use this data to guide their state decision making. In the backstage, they can self manage their own scholars and their achievements to enrich their own homepage. And the department administration team can also simulate this data to their own platforms for the HR management, evaluations, awardings, etc. This also helps the promotion of titles with our university. In the past, in the faculty professional titles, we can see the judgment of the achievements based on the academic database and also the professors and scholars will be filing by themselves. They are very unified or not so diversified indexes. And also the timeliness of this data is also not very good. 
Well, after we be this database, most of the data comes from this reservoir with a, a min minority provided by our factories themselves. So there's a more diversified need, a large number, and uh, the timeliness is also improved. And we have professionals to evaluate that to guarantee the quality. So this will serve as an authoritative source of data. This receives recognition from our university. So they serve as an important role in assessing the professional titles of our faculty. After years of application, you can see that the system is highly effective so they can avoid all those red tape and it can enhance the quality of our work. You can reduce the amount of time and workload needed for assessment of professional titles. And number three, we have, we, ha we help decision making with our systems. In partnership with competent departments of our university. So for example, we work with the international cooperation department of our university to help them to analyze the papers of experts. We also work with Office of Development and Planning. For example, we finish the evaluation of papers in sciences and humanities from 2016 to 2022. We also work with HR department in terms of application of professional titles, recruitment of new staff, etc. We also work with research management department to help decide the extra bonuses offered to profess professors and faculty. We also help them to finish the evaluation of faculty as well as the filing of application towards professional titles of universities. Number four, some extended functions of our library with the help of this database. We're able to promote decision making as well as the progress in terms of data management, let's say in terms of precision and standardization. For example, we work with Ice platform as well as China, the CCBD center, so that teachers can purchase the types of resources that they need. This will serve as an adequate supplement and it can avoid repetitive work. Our database is also connected with databases of patents to guarantee the accuracy. We also support our university's two campuses development, one in Beijing and one in Zhuhai, to help decision-making and management of human resources and scientific research. We also tailor our services to fit the demands of different departments. For example, different departments can define the labels, tags, and types of journals they want to include inside the database to fulfill their own departments, suiting their different standards of evaluation. After years of efforts, now our database or a repository has become a complete, accurate, unique, and authoritative one to help decision-making and research management of our university. We manage to enhance data mining and multi-dimensional analysis for transformation of research of our university. We also assist in research management decision-making to enhance academic innovation and influence, as well as offer more opportunities for cooperation. After years' efforts, 
our fruits of development have been well acknowledged by our university. For example, it's been stated in our university's IR, stated that our university's IR is the only authoritative data source for our university's scientific research data. Now, this one is clearly stated in an official document of the university issued in 2023. After years' efforts, I think I have the following points I can offer um, to all of you. So the first thing I believe we need to do is to strengthen the top level design because this is an active way for us to get engaged in the university's decision making. And second, we have to be proactive and we have to take the initiative. We need to proactively work with competent departments to foster coordination, to build an ecosystem of scientific research. Number three, we need to enhance publicity to empower decision-making for universities. Number four, we need to enhance coordination among departments to coordinate and integrate all kinds of resources. And last but not the least, we need to strengthen the combination of different platforms. We need to work with other third-party platforms to build more comprehensive authoritative database and to make it a more open one. This will help the development of our university as well. That's all for my speech. Thank you very much. of Beijing Normal University Library's uh, institutional repository. Um, based on our expertise, uh, CNKI is very proud to be contributing our efforts and uh, expertise uh, to the library IR constructions in future. Thank you. Next, uh, it is our pleasure to introduce Mr. Alexandros Alikazi. Alikis, sorry, the head of librarian of the National Technical University of, A of Athens. He holds a significant role as a steering committee member for uh, electronic resources as at uh, Hellenic Academic Library Link. The focal point of his discourse involves around transforming the Greek uh, academic library's landscape, past growth, current characteristics and the future development. Nice to meet you again, Alexandros. Your time, please. Ni hao. Hello to everyone. On behalf of Hien Link, I will present, I will present the transforming of the Greek academic library's landscape, its path gro past growth, current characteristics, and future developments. The Helen Consortium is based in Greece. It has 43 institution members. Among them is the National Library of Greece, the Hellenic Parliament Library, the National Hellenic Research Foundation, the National Documentation Center, other research institutions, and 24 academic. Over the past 20 years, Helen has seen a great uh, great usage of its content from its members. The e journals had over had 85 million downloads. The e-books ain't 0.6 million downloads. We have agreements with 23 scientific publishers. The e-journal visits were 3.15 million in the last five years. The negotiations, license and electronic content from 1998 to 2015. In 1998, the first multi-annual agreement with Elsevier Springer at the Gemic Press and MCB was signed. The main points were policies on journal subscription, promotion of the rational growth of journal collection, financial savings, advanced services to the academic community, support of the educational and research mission of the community and its members, 
big deals came to the forefront. But what changed our perception and triggered the shift from the traditional model to a transitional phase? The new perspectives through our communication with other uh, libraries, through the cell countries, the thousand European libraries link. A new era, how the developments have affected the Helen perspective in Greece, is one of the founding members of the Cell Consortium. And in 2019, we signed the declaration of the OA 2020, expressions of interest in the large scale implementation of open access to scholarly journals, initiated by Max Planck, big data analytic groups. It was obvious to us that a new era was at our doorstep. At that time, we, we realized that there was an upward trend in, in OA publications, in open access publication, and since in the graph. Uh, in, this is a map of the uh, some of the cell members. In 2008, uh, the cell members issued a statement on scholarly communication and open access. The new perspectives and public trends in Norway. We will focus on the global evolution that shifted the traditional subscription model to the read and publish module. Many arguments were leading towards this transition. The Nature Journals published a survey on this evolution and the transition to open access. There seems to be a gradual transition towards open access, either gold open access or hybrid. This is also another example of uh, reviews and publications concerning the publishing output. The new, new perspectives came into scholarly communication. K-Link, like other global national consortia, needed also to reply to the transformation of the scholar communication workflow and the involvement of all stakeholders, researchers, social groups, universities li and libraries, publishers, and also research funding. There are some new business models. We have the transformative agreements and the mix of match. The new business models, however, require a flexible adjustment of the needs, the budget, and of course, the sustainability of transitional agreements. New benchmarks came into place. The methodology and knowledge acquired, the understanding, understanding the scope of the transformative agreements, transformative negotiation principles, sustainability, equity and diversity, transparency and integrity, accessibility and openness, quality, cooperation and reciprocity, efficiency. Transfor transformation agreements are transitory agreements are and are not opposed or preclude scholarly publishing. On the contrary, they are transitional, a transitional process to strengthen and spread open access. The defining factors for no transition. Mapping our position, policies, infrastructures, processes, cost-effective agreements, analysis and evaluation of public finance and data, like publication cost, and cost per download, the monitoring of our publications, the collective strength through learning, cooperation, participation, reasoning, and importantly, transparency. The alignment of stakeholders, libraries, and university leaders, the Haling General Assembly, the scholarly communication unit based at the University of Patras, the Hellenic open access group representative from each participating university, which hosts webinars, meeting in person, brochures and questionnaires, the dissemination of the portion of the Greek scientific production, research output, APC payments, etc., an open science committee through the Greek Rectors Conference. APC payments in Greece are not easily findable. Funding comes from different and not easy attributable Sources. Budget constraints. The cost is unprecedented. Determination of viability and sustainability. 
There is also doubt regarding allocation of funds for fully open access publication. Engagement of the academic community. Adjust the system on incentive, incentives, advancement of valuation metrics of scientific publication, and an opportunity to initiate the participation and presence in the science communication to become more visible and gain, gain reputation. However, there is doubts regarding full governmental support and most important, the establishment of an open science policy. The hailing agreements for the years 2022-2024, all the agreements are on a three-year basis and centrally funded by the Minister of Education. Equity in publishing, all consortium members have access to or are included in the agreements. There is no opt-in or opt-out model. Currently, there are 12 agreements with publishers, nine with waived article processing charges, like the, uh, ACM, Cambridge University Press, the Greater IEEE, Institute of Physics, Oxford University Press, Royal Society of Chemistry, Spring and Wiley, and three with a discount on article processing charges that includes Emerald, Elsevier Saints. There is also HL1000, a publishing hub for the members of the HL Link on, based on the 1000 platform. There are two memberships in the Scope 3 and Open Libraries for Humanities. The eligibility criteria are the corresponding author and his her affiliation, the type of article, and the type, type and title of the journal or list. The publishers from 2022 to 2024, the uh, 20% discount of the article processing charges with Fanzavir, uh, 180 publications with IEEE. All publications are covered by the, from the, by the agreement with the Institute of Physics. With Springer, we cover 1,118 publications. With Wiley, 1,320 1, publications. With Cambridge University Press, all publications. With the Goiter, 75 publications. With the Royal, Royal Society of Chemistry, 199 publications. With Fos Oxford University Press, 231 publications. And there is also, as mentioned before, Scope 3, an open library for humanities. OA open access in mainstream journals like Cell, Lancet, or Nature is not yet fully achieved. Rational and sustainable transformation based on our annual research output, APCs are discounted at 85%. The implementation of the agreements. As mentioned earlier, the Scholars the Communication Unit was established in 2020, in 2020, in 2020 to help implement and monitor the agreements. The articles are handled centrally on the first come, first serve basis. Pages and tools for the support of the Hellenic community were developed. Detailed tables for its agreement, a general index, an open access options guide, a reporting of the publishing output under the rules. A brief review, a brief review of the 2019 2021 agreements. Most of the articles were published in hybrid journals. Mainly research articles were covered under these agreements. CC BY was the most common license, followed by the strictest CC BY and CND. There is a steady growth of OA publication. The first two transformative agreements with Cambridge University Press and Loyal Society of Chemistry are considered successful in terms of numbers and our expectations. But Hellenic supports more than subscription. There is the Hellenic Ad Academic Research Data Depository, HADMIN, the purpose of which is the operation of the central repository to gather all the research data created by Greek researchers and academic of Greek universities and to make them available most openly and securely possible. Persistent identifiers, DOIs, for resource usage across all Hellenic members. A DOI name is a digital identifier of an object, any object, physical, digital, or abstract. DOIs solve a common problem, keeping track of things. 
things can be matter, material, content, or activities. Orchid ID service for usage by research by researchers across all Hellenic members. The Orchid is a non-proprietary alphanumeric code to uniquely identify authors and computers of scholarly, scholarly communication, always, as well as Orchid's website and services to look up authors and bibliographic outputs. Interloan service, services for provide copies of scientific articles. The single loan Siboleth service supporting single sign on and access are called across all institutional members and publishers. A unified search engine for research across all her linked journals at an article level. The AMELIP, the accessible multimodal, multimodal electronic library. The goal is to offer accessible content through an equally accessible web application which is based on the application of copyright exceptions provisions for print disabled people as provided in the copyright law. The ILSAS integrated library system as a service, a cooperative library system among 18 academic institutions. Future developments are to include two more institutions and implementation of open software solutions. There is also the Calipos Open Academic Editions. The aim of the projects is to mainly is mainly to develop open access electronic textbooks available to the public and to the members of the Greek universities. Thank you very much for your attention. My congratulations to the organizing of this uh, very interesting event. Uh, our next speaker is from uh, Mr. Wang Chengjiu, Director of Guangxi University Library. Uh, taking Guangxi University Library as an example, he will share with us on the topic of data management and the application of academic libraries. Let's welcome him. Distinguished guests, dear colleagues, good afternoon. I'm honored to be invited to give you the presentation upon today's forum. I'd like to share with you some practice of the data management and application for academic library. I have the following six areas to report. The first is digital era. Our era is driven by data and digital technology. Data intelligence and data smartness, as well as other new productivity factors. And these are the key drivers of social development. And now we are in the digital era. This new data or digital literacy will make us change, make us driven fundamental changes in the fundamental logics and our entire civilization is being transformed. So that is why digitalization is really important for our era. I think every one of you know this very well, that data from very early on had existed but why, until current age, data became so important and meaningful? And we know the answer is time has changed and we're in the digital era. And the data in the digital era has its special meaning. Why is it so special? First, it is a fundamental resources. Countries around the world had regard data as independent resources, which is already the commonly recognized fact. Also, data is also an innovative engine. We have a new normal, new model, new industry, and we also see the transition of the conventional sector. 
all of this cannot be done without data. We have digital economy, digital sector, digital intelligence. Number three, data has become a product in the modern era. In the past, we already have the librarians who are managing data, but the data are not like product of today. In our libraries today, there are various digital products. Data is also an asset that uh, will be generating huge commercial interest for us, particularly data collection or database, it is highly valuable. So that is why that is so important and meaningful in the modern digital era. Every day we were collecting huge amount of data. For libraries, we would be collecting various kind of data. For an academic library, what kind of data do we generate and collect? Well, everyone may have different method of characterization. And uh, I will say there are four different aspects. First is the metadata for resources. Second, behavior data for readers. Number three, data for resource uses. Number four, the data for the library status. And for the metadata, you know this very well, they have the print journals, electronic publications, ebooks. These are all data for resources. The data for business and operation. Second kind is for management service. These include our operations of our libraries. We have the conventional service, collection, circulation, and we also have new services that also generate data, including reading, promoting, reference, consultation, discipline services, and also IP services. These are also our service data. Various universities also conduct cultural events and services. And we also have uh, space data. Safe data means the space we manage and the data for our private environment. For example, the temperature, the brightness of our libraries. And we also have the individualized services. There are also comprehensive data, including publications, data of uh, financing, And the third type is the data for our users that include its properties, gender, age, etc. And also in our university, it has to do whether these uh, students are uh, undergraduate, postgraduate, or it's a doctor's degree, and also the faculty and uh, for the user behavior data would mean how did the user use the service of the library the time they spent in the library the activity they conducted in the library so those are the primary data we need to know for library there's a huge amount of data generated in what way shall we manage this data? What principle should we follow? And this is my third point about the principle of managing data. The first rule, I think it's a rule of conflict, which means our data is for use. It's uh, co-shared by the library and the reader. 
And in that process, there might be an issue of data security, whether this data was collected in the legit and safe way, particularly data for the reader. On the other hand, for the data we collected, whether there is a counterfeiting, there is any linkage, where we're using the data, where is any in legit usage of the data. So this is the first rule. Second rule is the borderline. Where we're using the data, we have uh, data from various sources. You know, the data can come from certain organization or individual, and it may have to do with the privacy of an individual. So we need to take care of the data privacy. Those are the data has to do with the personal secrets of the user. That is what we call a borderline principle. While we're using the data, we need to pay special care of the privacy of a reader. Number three, we need to have standardized use. That is the third rule. There's a vast amount of data generated in the library, but the quantity does not mean quality. We need to guarantee good quality of our data. With this large amount of data, we need to prefer screening and cleaning to guarantee its accuracy and completeness and timeliness. Some kind of data may be changing from time to time. You need to update that in time. And also the storage of data needs also be standardized. And what we need to do with the repetitive data, etc. So this is the rule. The next one is informed concept. It has to do with the ownership of the data. Once you have access to the data or you need to visit the data, you need to know what are allowed and what are not. And for those who generate data, they need to know whether you allow the external visit and you need a consent of the individual. If a certain individual do not want to share this data, then this particular library should keep them confidential. And uh, last but not least, it's about ASICs. Well, actually, ASICs were already involved in the previous principles. In 2001, China officially approved the data security law in which there's special requirement for the data ethics, which means we must follow the principle of uh, ethics as well as professional morality where we're collecting and using the data. You cannot use it in uh, a legit and uh, non-ethical manner. And next point is about the data service and the application. We need to have accurate individualized service to our user. We can collect the, the user behavior data and to have uh, a multidimensional analysis of the user portrait. So we can provide individualized and accurate service to the individual. This is what we call individualization of the service. So based on the user data we collected, we can generate a portrait of the user. With that portrait, we need to know the special characteristics of that and provide all the dedicated service to this particular user. This is what we can serve. 
to universities and research institutes. So that's one thing. Next, in building China's top-notch universities and subjects, mostly we focus upon papers, books, patents to conduct our data analysis with the help of ESI indicator SCI, SSCI, and EI analysis. In this way, we'll be able to offer recommendations for better decision making. This slide shows to you what we have done to create a brochure, a bulletin to our teachers so that they will have a quick grasp of the latest development of certain subjects. In a digital era, digital capacity is important for students. So for libraries, it's important for us to train our students digital capacity. This is our important function. This kind of digital capacity involves theories, knowledge, indexing capacity, methods, capacity to use software. So we conduct trainings, seminars, and lectures to nurture students' digital capacity. A lot of universities in China are doing the same thing. The slide shows to you a couple of pictures of our seminars, workshops to enhance students' digital capacity. Next, we use data to offer smart services. The advent of ChatGPT offers to us a brand new perspective of utilizing data. ChatGPT, through a virtual platform, integrate resources and offer to us services. I believe that in the future, tools like ChatGPT could offer us services as well. It can replace human services. Number five, I want to talk about our data management and application fruits. This slide shows to you our university's research fruits platform. This is a platform that we built. It has two pillars. One is institutional fruits. The other one is individual research fruits. So inside the institutional one, you can see number of publications, number of quotations, each indicator, number of scholars. In terms of individual fruits, apart from number of publications, fruits, CV, and network of publications. So these are the two pillars of our platform. This slide shows to you a screenshot of the website of our platform. You can see the two links of individuals and institutions. 
So through this web page, you will be able to conduct holistic analysis. For example, the types of your research fruits and a mix of your income, a breakdown into your scientific research. For example, the quotations, publications, etc. There is also statistics of the second tier institutions. This refers to the numbers of our university's departments, schools, in terms of the number of publications, etc. So you will see all those wristbands, graphic displays. The numbers include the names of scholars, number of publications, references, quotations, etc. This slide shows to you the interface of scholars. So once you click onto the link of scholar, you will find out different branches of universities, different departments, and the number of publications with the author as the first author and other types of authors as well, number of patents, etc. We will also include scientific research projects into this pool as well. This slide shows to you scholars personal web pages. You will find out details like publications, number of publications, references, quotations, etc. We also have a backstage management system as well. It has four functions. It serves as a data center. You will be able to access number of downloads, visits, etc. The collection, indexing, recognition, matchmaking, analysis of data are the life cycle of management of data. So step by step, we will be able to finish the entire life cycle. Through these four steps, we will be able to manage and have a holistic picture of the fruits of scientific research. You can also analyze in detail the fruits. Next thing I want to share with you is what we have done with data to conduct research and analysis into subjects. We know that for every two years, ESI will update the categorization of subjects. And we also output a bulletin every two months for that purpose to update the development of each subject of our university will send the bulletin to competent departments for better decision making. And every one year, we conduct ESI subject analysis for the entire university, each and every subject of each and every department. This one is based on the ESI categorization of subjects. And it also tailors 
to the demands of each and every subject all departments have. So these are all about the application. Last but not the least, Outlook. In an era of abundant digital technologies and resources, it's important to manage these resources in precision for some historical reasons. Data sharing and data exchange still have obstacles. We still see data silos and it will reduce the efficiency of data sharing of libraries. So we believe that it's important for us to manage and fully utilize these data. It's important to build, therefore, data centers. So far, we have purchased a lot of databases. But when accessing these databases, it's difficult for us to grasp related data. We still have to turn to the database providers. But we hope that what they offer to us is objective, but we still hope that we can get those information in time to improve the quality of our services. Therefore, it's important to build a data center. With this data center, we can integrate and manage all the resources we have. And we can collect the info of all our users what they are doing with our services. In this way, we can improve our services accordingly. So that's the first thing we want to do. Second, artificial intelligence is important for new generations of libraries we have to think about moral issues because the traditional moral standards might be disrupted. So it's important for us to reshape moral standards. So there are lots of issues we have to consider. For example, data storage. For a lot of stores, they don't know how to store data safely. They fail to collect some data and store some data for two reasons. Perhaps it's because we don't have a comprehensive storage system and because we don't have enough money and policy support. Second, property issue, data, property rights. When we are digitalizing resources, books, documents, etc. And when we are using these resources, we have to consider the data property issue. Otherwise, there might be litigations and unwanted problems. Number three, data sharing and security. I've talked about that, so I'm not going to repeat on that issue, and last but not the least, talent. Data management is important for us. Therefore, we have to build an organization accordingly, and we have to nurture talent for that purpose. This year, when we were recruiting new staff, we set up a dedicated position digital librarian. We hope that we will be able to build a team of professionals. Five, 
ethical issues. I don't have to repeat on that either. So with all these problems in mind, we will have to work on data storage, the protection of property rights, security and safety, talent nurturing, ethical issues. We need to formulate new rules, regulations to manage data usage. Only in this way can libraries well adopt and apply the latest technologies to enhance our efficiency. Thank you very much for your time and patience. That will be all. Libraries experiences in data management and application. The speech inspired about the data classification, integration, and the application in academic libraries. Thank you for that. Next, let's welcome Ms. Risa uh, Alizula, uh, the head librarian of the Oriental Institute of the Czech Academy of Sciences. Ms. Risa is also a full professor at uh, Central Philippines University and the co-editor of the American U Libraries Association, IRRT International Leads, and also a member of the editorial board of the Journal of Information Science Theory and the Practice. Her research focuses on uh, adv advocacy, open access, and information literacy. Today, her speech is about Navigating on data, development, framework, and uh, advancement strategies. Let's welcome. To the esteemed speakers of the Forum on Future of World Academic Libraries 2023, the organizers, fellow information professionals, data advocates, participants, a pleasant day to all. Data has a transformative power in uncovering knowledge, fostering innovation, and driving progress ac across various domains. Hence, I'm sharing my humble experience um, on my topic today on navigating on data development framework and advancement strategies. Um, it is inherent that in this age of emerging technologies, data is the currency of discovery. And with that, I will be sharing in my 20 minute presentation, vicario, my vicarious as well as firsthand information and experience um, on my topic. Hopefully, uh, specifically, I would be able to share about the insights and transformative power of data, our role as librarians and the libraries as catalysts in the data verse, insights and development frameworks, and uh, discuss strategies addressing common data challenges and adapting to the ever-changing um, data landscape. So um, as we, we said, um, in this digital age, the power of data lies not merely in its abundance, but in the transformative potential to drive informed decision-making and cover patterns and catalyze innovation across diverse domains from um, uh, sciences to the environment to education, data is important um, for decision making to provide an accurate um, uh, um, facts that will guide us. So um, let me start by discussing the benefits foreseen by scientists. Nowadays, as we all know, the, the hype goes to AI. And I just wanted to uh, show uh, this as one of the many evidences um, that affirms the power of AI and data and, and data. Okay. Um, in the study of Torque et al. 2023, um, AI-based prediction from big environmental data patterns and learning algorithms have shown the, the capability to predict, assess, classify, recognize, and mitigate climate change hazards. This is just one of the many information that we know data has a transformative and powerful, uh, has a transformative uh, force and powerful um, uh, influence. Um, as we all know, data is also indispensable in education, um, highlighting the uh, 
idea of Stuart, digital technologies can transform education systems if they are designed around data, enabling better resource allocation, personalized support, or any other um, aspects of um, uh, guidance um, in, in both in the administrative as well as in, the, uh, in teaching and learning. Um, we also know uh, that data became indispensable for answering the most pressing questions we have. During the pandemic, data became indispensable for answering. Uh, we relied on data to see the effectiveness of certain strategies applied during those period of uh, uncertainties. For example, when we wanted to assess strategies on how um, uh, we can uh, accurately gauge students' understanding in a remote or hybrid learning setting, we relied on data, we conduct research. Uh, we wanted to know what role can adaptive learning technologies play in tailoring educational experiences to individual students' learning styles. We always sought for data in a lot of aspects from teacher training support, digital divide, remote learning efficacy, effectiveness of remote access, we all relied on data. And that we know that when we talk about data, librarians play a dynamic role to harness its power. In a study of Almeida and Sendon, they looked into a the taxonomy of library support for research data management. And an interesting um, uh, result showed that uh, there are three major categories where libraries um, play um, played an important role to support research data management. One, in guidance for the infrastructures, such as tools, methods, software platforms for data management and curation of research data. This is not the complete list, but as there is a sub there are sub categories to it. But I just wanted to highlight that. Um, our uh, duty as, or rather our functions as librarians, our role as librarian encompasses a lot of areas from infrastructure to support or technical services uh, to uh, building capacity, awareness raising, or providing um, continuous guidance. We always create libguides, we provide tutorials, we provide trainings. Um, librarian's role is indeed very important. Another interesting fact I wanted to share is an, uh, the result of an interview I conducted among Asian libraries promoting open science. Uh, well, what you build is that many libraries in Asia have adopted a bottom-top approach to developing frameworks in open science, which often commends with establishment of repositories. And um, we, all, we might be thinking, how does it relate to a data? As we all know, this repository started with entries of scholarly output, but for some, it, they have integrated data as part of the valuable assets, or there is a potential to integrate data being stored and shared in uh, repositories. What I'm trying to say is that the steers for developing a framework, a cohesive um, initiative can also be bottom to top. And that means it's not exactly an initiative that comes from the administration, but it comes from librarians and information professionals. Um, moreover, libraries acquire and steward numeric data sets as well as large collections of image files, audio archives, digital text, and non-numeric resources even before. So I'd like to highlight as well, when we talk about the role of libraries in research and knowledge dissemination, um, uh, this, the two studies or the two articles, these two articles that as early as 2008, the role of librarians um, in the creation of, new, of knowledge has been realized. Um, traditionally, we are seen as custodians of information, but the evolving role extends beyond managing existing resources to actively participating in the creation of new knowledge. Librarians nowadays collaborate with researchers, assist in data curation, and facilitate access to valuable data, as data sets, thereby playing a more proactive role in um, knowledge creation process in this increasingly digital and data-driven environment. Um, knowing the role of libraries in librarians is just one aspect. For a beginner in this implementation like us, 
um, I have participated and observed in finding the essential components for our robust and cohesive research data management. And thus, I'm, I'm presenting one of these um, um, aspects or tools for research um, data uh, for, for developing a cohesive framework and institutionalizing research data management, which most likely involves stakeholders capacity and capacity building of, of staff and stakeholders, ethical legal considerations, um, monitoring evaluations, technology infrastructure, and of course, the involvement of um, strategic planning. Um, when it comes to, to frameworks, each country, as I've noticed, have different um, uh, frameworks. Some may not have an explicit framework, but there are cohesive guidance. So I just wanted to highlight those that I found interesting and uh, useful. Hopefully, some of you might have seen this, but I just wanted to, to share about the research data management framework for Australian universities, uh, wherein Australian Research Data Commons partnered with 25 participating universities to develop this. As you can see, I may not be able to explain each of the aspects. This is not a linear frame. It is a complex uh, um, uh, component addressing the needs of every institution. Um, another thing is uh, the data management for libraries by the ALA um, group, a special group for Library and Informa Information Technology Association. Uh, which they have a primer for librarians on how to establish effective data management services in libraries. This is for those who are still dealing with um, basic parts of data management. Also, I wanted to highlight the RDM taxonomy, which is essential components, which I thought are also very are also essential um, elements in um, facilitating a sound research data management um, service. So, uh, foster which stands for Facilitate Open Science Training for European Research is actually um, um, a training organization that, uh, for open science. But um, the key areas that they have mentioned shows uh, the, the important elements of uh, research data management as part of the whole concept of open science. For us in the Czech Academy of Sciences, okay, um, to put in context, Czech Academy of Sciences is the a uh, whole network of a uh, fifth network of research non-university institutions uh, comprised of 54 um, research institutions. The Oriental Institute, which deals with researches on Asia and uh, the Middle East is one of the members or one part of it. And the Oriental Institute Library is one uh, of the libraries within this network of institutions but um, our we have a mother institution which is the um, uh, academy uh, of sciences main library or they call it Nihovna academy vietar um, so within that framework of this czech academy of sciences research data management is part of the whole open science initiative which is uh, on our end is still in the early stage of development while there's, uh, I cannot um, really say that we are following a, a thorough framework, but there are um, major areas where we are, uh, we have guidance on and we continuously uh, look into when we are dealing with research data management. That is the European and the uh, national legislation, the funder requirements, as a repository, the repository for data and the research output in of uh, scholars from the 54 networks of research uh, institutes. We also have um, the data management plan consultation as part of the initiatives, and uh, we use Fair Wizard as our DMP tool. For us, we take small steps towards this implementation, one on my end by engaging stakeholders, also uh, by uh, capacity develop, uh, through capacity development or capacity building of staff and um, um, our um, ongoing initiative to frame institutional policy for policies for research data management. As engaging researchers, I've just started with um, looking into the uh, training needs or the knowledge uh, gaps or um, 
um, the concepts that are that needs to be clarified among stakeholders. Um, we have uh, our continuing professional development uh, program in the library, uh, and one key area that we are giving emphasis is on building skills on research data management or data science. Um, there are so many initiatives that we needed to do, but like we are still in this and we are aware that it takes a long process, but somehow we are doing something. And also as part of the simple steps we're doing, we build our capacity or enhance our capacity um, on networking, collaboration and guidance. Of course, most from the group uh, opens of, on open science, the Academy of Sciences. Um, on, on the other hand, I'd like to highlight as well one uh, organization among the other organizations. Of course, there are other institutions or other uh, associations that deal with research data management. But on my end, I just um, I, I focus on one um, in order to to uh, um, have a, a cohesive follow up on, on whatever we needed. Um, and we could have um, more, we could be more familiar with the communication. This is with the International Association for Social Science, Information Service and Technology. This is an international organization of professionals working uh, on information technology and data services to support research and learning. So I just wanted to highlight because this is also somehow an opportunity for everyone or for the participants. Um, uh, I highly encourage you to look into the website to look for to find uh, fellowship opportunities uh, to uh, join discussion groups or consult on some relevant areas in uh, data management or data services. Um, <clears throat> our data uh, is inherently unique and our vision is to maximize its accessibility. We always believe in open link data. Uh, but on our end, this is still uh, a work in progress. So um, we see this as a potential, but at the same time as um, uh, a challenge, uh, as part of the challenges that we have. Yet we are, we will pursue, we will pursue on these things. Um, when it comes to challenges, some of these challenges that I've mentioned here, um, when we are building research data management services is quite common some may be just be true on our end so i just highlighted some of those as lack of resources resistance to change limited expertise data governance compliance security and privacy considerations integration with existing systems on the institutional level we face mostly the same challenges as what mentioned by masindi et al in their study the absence of explicit policies to guide each stage of data curation and capabilities limited managing sharing and reusing of this research data also there's the element of complexities of creating and implementing rdm policies particularly when dealing with diverse data types and disciplines we also might deal with licensing issues such as ensuring compliance with data usage licenses and addressing legal considerations for our staff to be specific um, we they see as a challenge the dealing with diverse qualitative data, which is not within the realm of our specialization. And thus, the library's limited personnel grapple with its complexities and priorities or, or uh, competing priorities. For clientels, um, we anticipate that scholars' expectations of libraries are deemed support uh, to address challenges related to VAR disciplines and methodologies may not be met. Um, scholars may face difficulties in finding tailored RDM support for their specific linguistic disciplinary and methodological needs as well. For the strategy, some of the strategies I uh, laid down um, are uh, encompass more than one um, challenges or addresses more than one challenges. Um, so like on the institutionalization, um, uh, I thought uh, providing training to all stakeholders can ensure awareness and adherence to these policies, ensuring that we are on the same page. Also, establish, establishing interdisciplinary RDM committees might facilitate communi communication and understanding across research areas to fill in the gap of lack of expertise on, on limited number of librarians and collaboration with legal uh, experts on compliance. 
when it comes to change management, one challenge, one of the challenges that library managers have is that we are in the middle management. We have, we don't have the full power to implement. So um, I suggested two uh, strategies to seek management support to implement change management strategies to communicate the benefits of RDM and advocate for stakeholders to be involved in decision making processes to address their concerns and provide training for them to ease in the transition. Uh, for librarians to master the skills for data before offering library based RDM services, definitely we need to start with um, identifying the specific training needs. Also investing in training programs for librarians to enhance their uh, RDM knowledge and establishing partnership with experts in data management. Um, of course, stay informed about evolving uh, privacy regulations can ensure practices comply with the standards. And um, if we think of data management, we really need to invest in technologies that support interoperability and data sharing between different platforms. Um, just to conclude my presentation, in navigating the dynamic nature of data, libraries emerge as vital um, custodians and innovators continuously adapting to evolving trends. Our pivotal role in stay, is staying abreast with data trends, which not only ensures our relevance, but also positions us as dynamic hubs for knowledge in data-driven future. As libraries embrace change, we librarians become instrumental in facilitating seamless access, fostering understanding, and propelling discovery in this ever shifting landscape. So we always look into adapting the dynamic nature of data, our role, reflecting on our roles in keeping up with data trends and staying relevant in this data driven future. Thank you very much for listening and have a wonderful day to all. If I cannot attend or participate in the uh, um, uh, synchronously, um, feel free to reach out through my email. Have a wonderful day. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Reza, for your wonderful speech. It has given us new uh, perspectives on strategies to address the challenges and navigate into the ever-changing landscape. Thank you so much. And next speaker is from Mr. Uh, Mohammed. Hassan, uh, Hassan Zadeh, President of Iranian Research Institute for Information Science and Technology, Iran Dog. He has made over 400 scholarly uh, con contributions, including more than 200 peer-reviewed research papers and over 55 books. He will give a talk about future of Iranian academic libraries, digital transformation, and the role of Iran Dog. Let's welcome. Hello, everybody. I'm Mohammed Hassan Zadeh, uh, president of Iranian Research Institute for Information Science and Technology. I would like to uh, present you my lecture under title Future of Iranian Academic Libraries, uh, Digital Transformation and Role of uh, Iran Doc. Iran Doc is an authorized body to collect and organize Iranian dissertations and thesis. And also uh, we work as a research institute of information science and technology. Uh, my lecture discusses the future of Iranian academic libraries and the role of digital transformation in improving their functions and values. And we know that digital transformation is the process of using digital technologies to create new and uh, modified existing uh, processes, products, services, and businesses uh, to improve performance, efficiency, innovation, and customer satisfaction. Uh, my paper introduces some of the ways that academic libraries can uh, embrace uh, digital transformation and uh, such as enhancing access and discovery uh, 
uh, to information resources, improving services and user experiences, supporting teaching and learning, uh, especially in virtual spaces, and uh, research and innovation, and uh, demonstrating impact and values. Uh, I also would like to address some of the challenges and risks, risks that uh, digital transformation poses uh, for academic uh, libraries, uh, such as data protection and privacy and ethical and social issues and organizational and cultural changes. Uh, my essay also highlights the role of the Iranian Research Institute for Information Science and Technology in collaborating with the academic libraries to provide them with information and knowledge support as well as uh, collaboration and empowerment uh, finally, I would like uh, to conclude that academic libraries uh, require to adapt the strategy and holistic uh, approach to digital transformation that considers uh, the needs and expectations of the users and stakeholders and the potential and uh, limitations of the technologies and vision and mission of uh, the libraries. We know that uh, academic uh, libraries are uh, changing and uh, we are not sure that uh, at the uh, in the future what will be uh, happen and uh, how we can uh, you know adapt uh, new technologies, uh, academic libraries are essential institutions uh, that uh, support the teaching, learning and research activities of universities and colleges uh, and they try to provide access to information, resources, services and facilitates the, the students and faculty and staff uh, however, academic libraries are also facing many challenges and opportunities in the digital age, uh, such as um, changing user needs and expectations and rapid technological developments, increasing competition and limited resources. Therefore, academic libraries need to adapt and transform themselves to meet the demands and uh, opportunities of this uh, digital era. Uh, I would like to uh, depict on uh, uh, digital transformation. I see digital transformation as uh, the process of uh, adapting new technologies. And uh, I see digital transformation, one of the ways that academic libraries can transform themselves as is by embracing digital uh, transformation and uh, digital transformation is the process of using digital technologies to create new or modify existing processes products services and business models to improve uh, performance efficiency innovation and customer satisfactions digital transformation can help uh, academic libraries uh, to improve their uh, functions and values such as uh, enhancing access and discovery um, for digital um, uh, transformation can help academic libraries provide more uh, convenient and comprehensive access to information uh, resources both physical and digital through online platforms uh, mobile applications uh, cloud services and artificial intelligence uh, especially to the these days artificial intelligence is uh, essential for um, every single uh, information uh, retrieval and information uh, dissemination, digital transformation can help academic libraries improve their uh, discovery and retrieval systems such as search engines, uh, recommender systems and metadata standards uh, and help users find and use the information they need and uh, even uh, uh, they will be uh, provide, able to provide service uh, uh, on user experience based on user experiences, uh, uh, and uh, digital transformation can help academic libraries offer 
more uh, personalized and customized services and user experience such as uh, user profiles feedback mechanisms uh, chatbots and digital assistants uh, and uh, uh, can also help academic libraries provide more interactive and engaging services and uh, user experience such as gamification virtual reality and augmented reality uh, they will be able to support teaching and learning processes in uh, academic campuses such as creating and uh, uh, curating digital content providing online courses and tutorials uh, facilitating online collaboration and communication and uh, helping them to assess learning outcomes and impacts and uh, uh, finally digital transformation can uh, demonstrate impact and value of academic libraries by uh, helping them uh, to um, demonstrate their impact and their value to university and society uh, by collecting and analyzing data and metrics showcasing achievements and best practices uh, communicating and uh, advocating their role and uh, contribution and securing funding and support the uh, issue that uh, we uh, require to emphasize on especially in academic libraries and uh, but uh, we know that uh, there are some uh, challenges and uh, uh, it is not so easy uh, to be digitally transformed in academic libraries and uh, uh, there there are um, um, challenges and uh, you know um, we uh, should try to uh, to uh, solve problems and be uh, well equipped to uh, leverage digital transformation for best um, services and uh, best uh, uh, information solutions uh, that uh, uh, will help uh, students and academic uh, staff members uh, to fulfill their uh, duties uh, and uh, um, these challenges you know are essential but um, uh, there are risks for academic libraries such as uh, data protection and privacy uh, through digital uh, transformation it is very important and crucial to have uh, guidelines and uh, frameworks for uh, data uh, protection and uh, privacy, privacy by um, uh, experiencing uh, successful uh, digital transformation we can increase the uh, you know we can increase the data uh, privacy uh, digital transformation uh, uh, can uh, you know increase the vulnerability and exposure of the data and information that academic libraries collect store uh, process and share both uh, internally and externally therefore academic libraries need to ensure the security and confidentiality of uh, the data and information and respect the rights and uh, pref preferences of uh, users and uh, stakeholders ethical and social issues are the second challenges that uh, uh, academic libraries encounter through digital transformation and it can raise uh, some ethical and uh, social issues for academic libraries such as digital divide uh, digital literacy digital uh, citizenship digital inclusion and digital sustainability therefore academic libraries require to address these issues and promote the values and principles of uh, the library uh, profession such as uh, you know uh, equity diversity accessibility and uh, social responsibility organizational and you know uh, cultural changes also are uh, related to digital transformation and uh, require some uh, organizational and cultural change for academic libraries such as new skills and comp uh, competencies 
uh, but um, these are uh, almost because of new rules and responsibilities, new policies and new uh, procedures and the structure and uh, processes and uh, a totally new mindset and attitudes that uh, come from digital transformation. Therefore, academic libraries uh, need to manage and facilitate the change and foster a culture of innovation and uh, adoption. We, as uh, Irandak, uh, try to help academic libraries uh, to be able to keep uh, the pace and uh, be able to uh, experience, you know, digital transformation uh, with the least uh, challenges and vulnerabilities. And, uh, you know, uh, the most uh, feasible way that um, academic libraries can transform them themselves is by collaborating with you know each other and uh, uh, Iranian Research Institute for Information Science and Technology Iran DAC is uh, as a national research center and uh, authorized body that has a mission to meet the country's uh, need in the field of uh, information science and technology uh, knowledge management and uh, support for science and technology policy making uh, defined uh, several rules and functions that uh, um, will help uh, acad Iranian acad academic libraries and we try to conduct research and education information science and technology and disseminate uh, findings uh, to academic libraries and they can uh, leverage our findings, uh, you know, to uh, equip themselves uh, to uh, for a digital transformation experience. Uh, and uh, another mission that we have uh, is devel uh, developing and maintaining information resources and databases, uh, you know, we, we gather uh, and organize and disseminate um, Iranian, uh, you know, uh, uh, scholarly uh, and scientific databases and uh, uh, current current research in uh, Iranian universities and uh, research centers, uh, and uh, we, you know, work as a directory of scientific uh, uh, resources. Uh, of Iranian universities and research centers uh, and we provide information services and products such as abstracting and indexing uh, bibliographic and citation analysis document delivery reference and you know consultation and information dissemination we support uh, the development and uh, implementation of national and regional information policies and strategies and uh, such as uh, you know open access open science open data and open innovation and uh, we are uh, to uh, help academic libraries uh, to be uh, to be to to be able to use uh, digital transformation for service and product uh, improvement and uh, we provide um, a good infrastructure for collaborating and networking with uh, national and international uh, organizations and institutes uh, in the field of information science and technology such as universities research centers libraries uh, publishers and professional associations and this is a framework that and this is a background and infrastructure that uh, academic libraries can uh, use uh, and uh, even engage uh, in our network and uh, put their uh, information resources into our uh, network. Irandak plays a, a vital role in uh, advancing the scientific and technological development of uh, uh, Iranian universities and uh, 
normally Iranian academic community by providing information and knowledge support for um, academic and research community as well as the policy makers and uh, even for the public and the Iran DAC also contributes to the global information society by sharing this experience and best practices with other uh, countries and uh, uh, regions uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the strategic goals of uh, Iran DAC is to establish a network of uh, Iranian academic libraries that can provide access to quality information resources and share their resources and services for the uh, community members and uh, Iran DAC also has taken several steps to achieve this goal such as developing and implementing national standards and guidelines for academic libraries such as collection development, cataloging, classification, indexing, uh, preservation and evaluation and uh, our a new standard will be enacted by Ministry of Science uh, Research and Technology and uh, will be available for uh, our member uh, academic libraries through the ministerial uh, uh, networks and uh, we are providing uh, financial and technical support for academic libraries uh, in terms of uh, grants equipment software training and consultation our training courses are uh, continuously uh, presenting for academic libraries and uh, people from academic community uh, participate uh, in our, uh, our uh, training courses and we are trying to uh, coordinate and facilitate the cooperation and uh, communication among academic libraries uh, such as resource sharing, uh, interlibrary loan for a while and uh, concert yeah, and uh, join projects uh, towards uh, information sharing uh, and uh, providing universities with information information uh, you know resources and uh, finally we are to promote and advocate the role and value of academic libraries such as awareness campaigns publications conference and uh, so on and uh, another strategic goal of Iran DAC is to empower uh, librarians towards digital transformation which is the process of using you know digital technologies to uh, create new services and products has taken several steps to achieve this goal such as providing uh, education and training programs for librarians and such as you know workshops webinars courses and uh, certificates and various topics related to digital transformation and uh, we are creating and maintaining online platforms and communities for librarians uh, such as websites portals we have more than 37 uh, information systems that uh, uh, provide service for academic libraries as well and uh, we are to support and encourage innovation and creativity among librarians such as competitions challenges and uh, uh, providing uh, you know uh, an environment uh, and working space for uh, library and academic library communities to be able to uh, share their uh, lived experiences on uh, transformation transforming from paper cards to uh, digital cards and uh, shifting from uh, digital cards to you know uh, uh, network based information resource uh, sharing and this is you know uh, our uh, main uh, challenge and uh, we try to find solution for uh, the challenges uh, regarded uh, uh, to digital transformation uh, i think uh, the future of uh, the future of iranian academic libraries depends on how they can adapt and transform themselves to meet the 
demands and opportunities of the digital era you know digital transformation is a key factor that can shape the future of uh, academic uh, libraries but it also requires some challenges and risks that need to be addressed irandak is a key partner that can help academic libraries achieve uh, their goals and uh, vision by providing them with information and knowledge support as well as uh, collaboration and uh, empowerment uh, among uh, academic libraries therefore academic libraries need to adopt a strategic and holistic approach to uh, digital transformation that considers the needs and expectations of the users and stakeholders and uh, the potential and uh, you know limitations of technologies and the vision and mission of the uh, libraries uh, i would like to appreciate the uh, organizers of uh, this fruitful conference and i would like to <clears throat> ask uh, those who uh, participated uh, in this conference to communicate uh, for more you know detail information on our plans and programs it, you can write me uh, using my email and uh, i will try to um, answer uh, uh, questions and consider comments coming from our community thank you Thank you, Mr. Hazendat, uh, for sharing your pers perspective on the future of uh, Iranian academic libraries and the role of digital transformation in improving their functions and values. The case from uh, Iran Doc inspires us a lot. Thank you so much. Uh, our last speaker is from my colleague, Mr. Wu Junhong. Uh, she is the manager of the literature evaluation research department of our uh, company. She will share with us the title of Academic Evaluation Big Data Drives Library Innovation. Let's welcome. 各位专家, 各位代表, Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm honored to attend the Forum on Future of World Academic Libraries. Libraries serve as an important platform of information exchange. This year, we're talking about data empowers a smarter library, and this marks the future of library development. I'm honored to be here to talk to you to talk about what we have done in this regard and to update you with the latest progress of our work. If you take a look at some of the leading libraries and their experience across the world, We'll have the following key takeaways. First up, it's important for us to learn and build new toolkits. And second, we need to offer services, collect information, and offer recommendations for decision making to satisfy the demands of our users. Number three, we need to nurture a team of professionals. First up, data is the foundation of our innovative service offered. Our very basic service is data indexing and searching. We'll be able to use tools to offer recommendations for decision making. Through data mining, we'll be able to explore and discover knowledge. This is a very high level demand of knowledge-based service. So I believe that the library industry has changed greatly. Nowadays, everything is based on data and data-based resources will mark the new trend of our industry. So in this sense, I believe that the future is gonna be based upon smart service. We believe that in such a digital era, academic resources serve as the foundation 
of our services and innovation. For librarians, it's also important for us to learn about big data analysis and evaluation. Academic evaluation data is a kind of reprocessing and mining of basic data based upon databases of journals, patents, through indexing, categorization, standardization, labeling, etc. We'll be able to establish indicators and build links of journals. In this way, we'll be able to offer support to scientific research decision making and decision and evaluation of talent and professionals. So here within CNKI, we have a series of products that we integrate together to create a brand new academic evaluation platform where you will be able to find evaluation for books, papers, journals, and offers, as well as institutions and subjects. So next, I want to talk about what this platform can offer to scientific research. We believe that at every stage of scientific research, it's important to filter knowledge, to set up the right target, and to constantly adjust the direction of evaluation. After we finish the scientific research, we also need to evaluate what we have done for to recognize what we have done to recognize the contributions to offer a better ecosystem. Therefore, evaluation is an important link that transcends all stages of scientific research. In terms of evaluation, there are a couple of pillars. First up, it can promote information of subjects Second, the hotspot issues of scientific research. It can help us to dig out innovative talent. It can also, number four, evaluate publications. Number five, it can evaluate the fruits of research, for example, papers and books. Let's take a look at the first point, that is recommendation of subject information. Librarians should recommend to the users the best match papers. For example, we will include the papers published in the past 10 years in 168 subjects according to the ranking of the number of quotations and references. So these will represent some of the best choices of papers. For example, we will select the top 1% most downloaded papers. We refer to CNKI and other databases to create our standards of selection. We call it the PCSI system. This will help us to select and compare papers with different numbers of downloads and quotations. For example, we will offer a certificate to the papers included inside our database. You will also find out modules on our website, for example, after you type in the keyword, you can choose to create a ranking of all those results of research of search according to the PCSI standard. For example, this slide shows to you a screenshot of from 2019 to 2023, the papers issued, published, with high quotations, high downloads, and high PCSI score. 
in the field of library management. So you can see on page one, you will find out the most hotspot issues. You can find out keywords like metaverse, the opportunities brought and challenges brought by metaverse. Another keyword you can find out is smart library and the perspective of digital humanity. This academic evaluation platform can also offer database of books published aligned with the ISBN. So you will find out the updates of ISBN data. This database will give you the status quo of China's the books published here in the country. And you will find out the link of the ISBN info of the book. You can find out the number of quotations, the specific paragraphs quoted. So you will be able to find out the influence of all books. According to this database, we launch a list or a ranking of the books that are most referred to or quoted in the past five years, as long as the book is within the top 5% to 10% on the list, it'll be included inside the ranking. And we'll offer, give a, give a specific label on the page of the book. So with that, you will have a better choice when you're recommending books to students and scholars. This can help libraries to choose the books they purchase. Now this book evaluation system also create an API to connect with libraries. So as long as a library has already purchased this book, you'll be able to directly access the digital information and resources. This slide shows to you the specific info of a book recommended on our website. So for example, this book is called The Theory of Criminal Law, published by Peking University with over 10,000 quotations of, you can find out the number of references and quotations of different versions of this book. Apart from quotations, you can also find out the specific paragraphs quoted. So you will find out the context of the quotation. And you can also find out the comments offered by peers when they were quoting these paragraphs. And you know that these comments mean a lot for academic research. Apart from recommending papers to users with a visualized tool, we can also analyze the hotspot issues of scientific research. Again, let's take a look at the screenshot from 2019 to 2023. The subject is library management. And with all the results of search, you can output the result in Excel, and then you can input the Excel document into tools of analysis. You will be able to create through, for example, Vols Viewer, a map of knowledge. Let's take a look at this map. For example, you can find out some of the keywords, library, public library, smart library, academic library, and then you can also find out data twin, chat GPT, metaverse. These are the new ones, new key or hotspot issues. And then you can also find out 
cited space, false filler, knowledge map. These are all about the tools we can use, which demonstrate to you the popularity, long-standing popularity. And then you can also find out keywords like trends, momentum, which demonstrate to us that these tools can help us to find out the hotspot issues. Now then with ground theory, we can analyze the quality of services offered by libraries. This is this in itself is a hotspot research topic. So with that, you can find out keywords like users behavior, users experience, etc. So this is what we can do with our database to analyze into the most quoted papers. But still, it's quite a rough analysis. But what if we want to have a more in-depth analysis? For example, on the topic of smart library, what do we do? Again, with China's quotation database, you can type in the keyword of smart library and you will find out in the past three years, the CSSCI papers quoted and you find out over 1,000 pieces of the results, and then you can analyze into those 1,000 pieces. Again, you can output the results, and you can input the document into Volts Viewer for analysis, and then you can create a map. This slide shows to you the map. You can see the red ones are linked with or centered upon smart library library transformation, IOT, data mining, robotics, smart librarian, spatial experience services, etc. The green ones are focused on academic library, digital library, immersive library, information science, leading universities and leading subjects, high quality development, etc. The blue ones are about metaverse, blockchain, 5G, data twin, data evaluation platform, library alliance, etc. The yellow ones are about, for example, big data, knowledge service, recognition of scenarios, etc. And the purple part are AI, machine learning, deep learning, a mobile library, user portrait, etc. So here are a few heat points and we make analysis of them. And upon these slides, you can see the correlation of a specific subject and you can find some other scholars who are in the similar direction to expand your talent team For example, we find this is a citation of Renmin University Data Engineering and uh, Knowledge Engineering. And we found all the authors who have cited their papers. And you can see scholars from Sichuan University, Shanghai University, Suzhou University, Wuhan University have all cited the papers from this particular lab of uh, Renmin University, which means their study direction is closely correlated with this national key laboratory. So we can find some scholars who are in the similar direction. And this academic result need to be presented in papers to have exchange and sharing with peers. And you need to start by finding an influential and high quality journal for peer review and the publication. And how can a library help the faculty and students to find a suitable journal? Our platform had a screening tool called Journal Evaluation Database they have uh, three indexes. 
first is a report on the Science Technology Journal World Influence Index or WGCI. Second report is a China Academic Journal International Citation Report. And last one is the China Academic Journal International Influence Factor Report. My recommendation is the WGCI or the first one because they include 15,000 representative journals worldwide, which is quite representative of their locality, discipline, or sector. So all the journals home and broad are evaluated on the same platform. So it's a highly influential. The other is the WGCI index can have a holistic representation of the comprehensive influence of this journal. And uh, all of these uh, journals has been screened based on the combination of quantitative and qualitative analysis and pulled various analysis organizations and home and broad, including traditional influencing sectors. They also have others before including those uh, highly cited papers and highly cited organizations. So from the both author and the citation perspective, we can find the commonly recognized journals. For Chinese journals, if the language is English, we reference the CSCD and the Chinese journals, we have the Peking University core journals, science technology core journals and CSCD. So for these three organizations, if two of them recommended this particular Chinese language journal, it will be included. We have added some of the journals sponsored by China Science and Technology Association, high quality science technology journal, categorized the category or the T1 categories for international evaluation system. You see it has to do with GCR and Scopus Q1 and Q2. So you can see for WHGCI, their journals is highly representative and they are all excellent journals. In this uh, 2023 version, we've included more than 15,000 journal in which uh, there are 1,700 come from China. WGCI is a qualitative comprehensive index to rank these journals, which means if WGCI value is one, that means it is average in the discipline if it is higher than one, which means it's better. It is actually a times to the average. For example, nature has a value of 190, which means it is 190 times better than average, which is a very good journal for science and 176, so slightly lower than nature, for New England Medical, it is uh, 122, which means they have a even profound, more profound influence in medical science. WGCI index is composed of influencing factors, total society times, and internet index. If you are interested, you can go to this website to understand it. WGCI has the following discipline categorization. It showcases the internationalization, forward-looking, and flexibility. There are all together. 296 disciplines. 
information. This is the website of the WGCI and the product started from 2019. We're going to launch the report number four. And all the previous report can be found on this website. For four years consecutively, it has been recognized by the peers and the whole our colleagues in the libraries, you need to know this evaluation system because this is a new system compared with SCI or Scopus. This one can have full consideration of high quality Chinese journals. And this is what we call eco treatment for domestic international journals. So the universities can use this figure more. And uh, also in this uh, journal evaluation module, as I have WJCI, we also have a historical influencing factor report and have statistics of the details of this journal, author, organization, discipline ratio, and publication. These are also very important so you can know all the details of a particular journal. And we also have International Citation Annual Report, which has the statistics of our overseas citation. Since 2005, based on this data analysis, we have provided big data-based in-depth report for more than 200 journals. There are citations and others to find all of these uh, advantages and the disadvantages, and there will be interpretations. So there will be very targeted recommendations to improve the quality, enhance the influence, in order to respond to the need of the journal's influence and uh, in the CNTI center we also have a multi-dimensional index to reflect the representative literature's influence this include citation there are 11 indexes and the other is for download, there are eight indexes. So all together, 19 indexes. So they reflect the quality of academic papers from multi-dimension and like to focus on the representative indexes. First, for the single paper evaluation, this all included in this uh, single papers report and you can find its a report for this particular paper and uh, the standard of including this in excellent product would mean top 10 percent of the papers and for this report this include academic influence spread influence journals influence and the peer review and comments You can see the highly incited phrases and the original context can have a comparison of semantics. So you can find the highly cited paragraphs in these papers. And we can also accumulate this uh, frequency and you can find the most influential part and based on the frequency and citation times, we can find the index to reflect the most valuable part of a particular journal. The cited text may have a markers of the year and author's name. The marker would mean first time proposed, 
and first definition, etc. For all the phrases, for all the sentences with this factor, we call it academic comment sentence. And if the literature is cited for these academic comment sentences, this will be found as F1 index to show the innovativeness of the author. All those indicators can also be combined accordingly, according to your needs. For example, here I show to you eight indicators. PCSI, for example, as well as F1 indicator, L indicator, total downloads, PDSI, etc. And then with all those seven indicators targeting papers published from 2014 to 17 in library management, in total 88,000 papers, I conduct evaluation. This slide shows to you the results. In terms of the comprehensive value, it's 1.115 with the highest score goes to the theoretical analysis of reading proliferation and library management. This book also won a national award as well. You can see that the average score is 36, way more than the average 1.115. It shows to us that with a multimodal evaluation, combining qualitative and quantitative methods, we'll be able to get the best result. Therefore, we believe that we can utilize such a system for evaluation for not only scientific research, but also scientific research management, talent management, etc. For example, to evaluate subjects, development and construction, sometimes we have to make a comparison. For example, with different universities and different subjects, tier one subjects of different universities. This slide showed to you the fruits of universities with a score that is higher than B plus. So we limit the time span within 2019 to 2023, and we conduct institutional analysis. We can find out within that period of time, the number of papers published by different institutions and their scores of different indicators. Then you can output an Excel document. You input the Excel document to create a graph, for example, with X X's as CSSCI citations and high number of citations as Y X's you can find out that in this field of library management, Renmin University, Nanjing University, and Wuhan University are the leading universities in China. You can see that in terms of the most cited papers, Renmin University is ranked the first. In terms of CSSCI papers, Wuhan University is ranked the first and Peking University and other a couple of universities are also among some of the best. We can also compare the performances of different universities. For example, if you search Tsinghua University and you can find out different kinds of data and you can output them into Excel and then you can create accordingly a graph, you will find out that since 
the 14th five-year plan, the positive growth of the number of papers. And then you can also search for the number of papers published under different categories of subjects of Tsinghua University. And you can also check out the specific figures under each and every tier one subject. You can then select, for example, under a specific subject, the number of papers published by other institutions as well. This academic evaluation platform offers to authors the services they need as well. For example, you can find out the a platform service for you to recognize your academic research fruits. And we also offer a statistical tool for you to showcase the totality, the mix of all the fruits that you published. You can also find out the ranking of different authors as well. For example, the each indicator, the most cited papers, as well as other indicators. So you can create a ranking. This platform will offer to every author a seven day free trial for you to download your own evaluation report. I would recommend all of you to advertise this platform to your teachers and students, and they can download their own report. The slide shows to you the web link and the QR code. If you scan the QR code, you will be able to find out your own evaluation report immediately. That's all for my research and speech. Thank you so much. I look forward to work with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Wu. We all know that academic evaluation data is very essential for libraries' innovative services, such as the information uh, re uh, recommendation, research trend, uh, tracking, or discovery of scientific uh, talents or, and uh, so on. So the excellent uh, analysis of the data will certainly boost the development of academic libraries. Uh, on this aspect, uh, CNKI hopes to enlarge our evaluation data uh, construction to provide more uh, assessment tools for those uh, especially for those non-English literature uh, libraries. So, so far we have uh, had all uh, amazing presentations today. Uh, once again, thank you for all the insightful speeches. The future of academic libraries lies in their ability to adapt and effectively utilize the data to meet the diverse need of researchers. By embracing innovative practices, academic libraries can enhance their services to keep up with the changing times. That's all for today's forum. Thank you for your attention and time. We will resume tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock for the third session. Hope to meet you again. Bye-bye.